Hey guys, Morphologist here again with a new video on Space Engineers. This time around, I wanted to show you how to build the mine that I spoke of earlier this week in my preview video. But this just isn't for the mine. If you want to know how to build stuff that will use sensors to follow things around, this guide will help you do that. To better help you understand how this concept works, I've created this diagram to demonstrate how sensors can be used to vector thrust towards a given object. The sensor field is represented by a yellow box and an enemy or object is represented by the red dot. When the object gets within the sensor field, it triggers the thruster opposite of that sensor to start thrusting. In this particular design, it will continue to do this until it reaches zero meters to an object, at which point a final sensor will trigger it to explode and destroy whatever's around it. In this tutorial, I'll be using two custom blocks, a custom ion thruster and a custom small antenna. You don't have to use these, I just use them to make it more compact. But if you want to download them, you can download them from the Steam Workshop in the info of this video. So first, let's start by clearing the toolbar of all existing items, and then replacing it with the following. A light armor cube, a light armor angle block, a light armor corner piece, a generator, a gyroscope, a warhead, the sensor block, the custom small antenna block, and finally, put the ion angle thruster in the last slot. After that, we're ready to start building our sensor guided mine. For this video, we're gonna build it out of a large ship. So I selected large ship and I'm gonna place my landing gear on a heavy platform. Next, place a small generator with the panel facing downward. Then place a small antenna block on top of that. The reason for the antenna is so that we can remotely access it to be able to turn it on and off. To set this up, we're gonna have to access the control panel of our new ship. So inside of the control panel, find the small antenna, go to the ownership, and transfer it to yourself. Good, now that it's set to myself, I know I'll be able to access it from a distance and not have the problem of it exploding before I'm finished. I'm just gonna rename mine quick, but you don't have to do this. This is just so that I can see it in the list. Now that we've got the control system set up, we're gonna now set up the actual sensor and thruster system that will make this thing work. To simplify things, I start with the thrusters opposite of the side I'm going to place my sensor. This way I can keep things straight in my mind and I won't get confused if I add them all at once. What we'll need are two thrusters, one for thrusting and one for stopping. You'll know the direction of the thruster by reading the side of the thruster for this particular model. It has an arrow pointing in the direction of the thrust. After that, place three warheads on either side stacked on top of each other. Then place two more small light blocks on top of the antenna. Good, now we've got the full length of the mine that we're going to be building. The last step here is to place the sensor. Now this is gonna be the sensor opposite of the thrusters that we've just placed. And after we've placed this sensor, we're gonna to have to manipulate the options in it to get it to work for our means. Now, the first thing you wanna look at are the extents. These are what we want to set primarily to make this thing work. First, drag all the extents to 50 meters, except for the back extent. To better understand why, I've included a diagram at the lower left-hand corner of this screen so that you can understand what direction means what. Finally, uncheck detect players. That way it won't follow us around until we're ready to activate it. Next, we wanna set up the actions for the thruster. For this step, we only want one of them, not two. You have to have one that will stop it just in case an object flies past it. The first one you wanna to set to toggle block on. That's so that once something comes into the sensor block range, it will turn on. But we also want something in the adjacent slot so that it turns off if something gets out of the sensor's range and so the mine will not continue to move. The last step is to find the thruster that you've just set and change the thruster override to its maximum and then toggle it off. This way it won't move until we're done and that's very important, otherwise it'll get away from us. So as you can see, one thruster's on and one thruster's off. That's exactly how we want it. Now to do the rest of this is pretty simple. All I have to do is repeat the process that I've just shown you on all axes and it will operate just as shown in the earlier part of this video. Since this is pretty redundant, I'm going to speed through and cut to one of the last steps. It is absolutely critical that you follow the final steps to make this work. And remember, every time you place a new thruster, place the sensor opposite of them so that you don't lose track of what sensor belongs to what thruster. If you don't do this and wait to the end, 
you won't be able to get it to work unless you're really good at remembering the names and numbers of each item. Lastly, make sure that you've set the sensor to not detect anything. Setting up what you want it to detect will come in the final steps when we want to activate the mine. And it looks like this mine is relatively complete. All we have to do is add the last sensor on the bottom and a gyroscope. Now the reason for adding the gyroscope is so that it remains stable even if it's knocked by an object. If you don't include this, it could start spinning rapidly and not be able to detect anything efficiently. Now you don't have to use this, I'm just saying that if you don't, it could be problematic. Good, now that that's been placed, it's time to delete the landing gear. With this final step, all the sensors required to make this thing move in the right direction will be completed and we can start to test our mine. Just remember to follow through with the steps that I've shown you. Excellent, now it's time to access your sensor guided object remotely by pressing K and going to the upper left hand corner of your screen. There you will find a list of ships belonging to you. The one that you've created will likely be the highest number large ship. Once in it, we want to go to the control panel and group select by shift selecting all of the sensors and then naming it into a group, then saving it. Mine is named nav sensors. This is so that we can group change all of the parameters if we need to, to say activate it to detect people or detect the large ships, anything we want. For this short experiment, I'm just going to set it to detect me and that's it. And sure enough, it is following me around perfectly, trying to get to zero, but it's not going to explode yet. But that's because we haven't added the final sensor. This is the sensor that will detonate once it gets within a certain distance of the mine. So let's deactivate this mine by going back into your menu and deselecting detect people. Now we can approach it and it won't start moving around. Alright guys, now this is the tricky part. You have to be very careful with this and do it step by step or you'll detonate it before you're done. So first I'm going to place the sensor. Immediately afterward, I'm going to approach it and access it via its control panel. The first thing I'm going to want to do is uncheck mark detect players. If I don't do this, it will explode while I'm working on it and that won't be any fun. Next we want to manipulate the extents so that it accurately wraps around the exterior of the shell. For me, I'm setting it to around 4 for the left and for the front and the rest I'm going to set to around 10. You might want to play with this to get it just right, it might have to be a little bit closer, but to my estimation, this is about correct. Now that the sensor settings are correctly set up, we're going to want to set up the warheads so that they detonate. Shift selecting all of the warheads, go to the right hand corner of the screen and rename the group to something that you'll remember. For me, it's warheads. Then uncheck mark the safety. This way they will explode once we've set the sensor to detect an object. Before this will work, we need to find the last sensor we've created and go into the setup actions. There, we will have to find the group that we created for the warheads, which are located in the group section at the upper left hand corner of the screen. Once you've located it, drag and drop it to the left option on the lower part of the screen and select detonate. This makes it ready to go and primed to explode. All that's left is to test this creation and see if it actually works. But first, let's save, just in case something goes wrong and just in case you want to come back and change things in the future. Great, now let's test it out. Hit K again and go and find your ship remotely. Once in there, select all of your sensors, scroll down in the options and find detect players. Now it's ready to find you and explode. You can of course use this against large ships by going and selecting large ships or small ships or whatever you want in the options. Just for the sake of this video, I'm testing it on myself. And here it comes. Once it gets to zero, it should do its business. So that's it guys. Now you have the tools to make your own smart sensor guided object. It's up to you for what you want to create and I am eager to see what you guys come up with. So make sure you post in the comments section and let me know what you thought of this video. And I hope to see you guys next time.